Well, welcome to today's uh, Coffee with Job. It's Tuesday. And uh, this is actually Ice Coffee with Job because I'm recording it a wee bit later or earlier actually on, on Monday afternoon. Have you ever had this feeling that you would want, you know, more space? You feel kind of confined and, and, and closed in. I think that happens to a lot of us in different ways. Excuse me while I shut this door. <laughs> um, here's a really, this is, this is just such a fascinating passage from verse 13 of chapter 36. Still I like you speaking. We're still with good old L.I. Hugh, who, as one of you wrote in to me, said, I've come to appreciate him a whole lot more. The godless in heart harbour resentment. Even when he fetters them, they do not cry for help. They die in their youth among male prostitutes of the shrines. But those who suffer, he delivers in their suffering. He speaks to them in their affliction. Now, just that section is talking about those who listen to God and serve him. And then find that they they lose out and then they harbour resentment against God. And the godlessness of their hearts is shown and, and it, it kind of goes downhill. It's a, it's a life of, of vice and it's a life of, of a kind of helter-skelter down. And then he goes on. He's wooing you from the jaws of distress to a spacious place free from restriction to the comfort of your table laden with choice food. But now you are laden with the judgment due to the wicked. Judgment and justice have taken hold of you. Be careful that no one entices you by riches. Do not let a large bribe turn you aside. Would your wealth or even all your mighty efforts sustain you so you would not be in distress? Do not long for the night to drag people away from their homes. Beware of turning to evil, which you seem to prefer to affliction. I love that spacious place. It reminds me of Psalm 18. He, he brought me into a spacious place. And he's, he's saying that God is wooing you out of distress into a spacious place because one of the things that suffering does is it very often confines you. You know, when I was uh, ill in hospital a few years ago, I was very confined, obviously confined to a bed, uh, struggling to... My, my muscles entropied and, and they needed to be built up again. You're very limited in what you can do in, in so many different ways. And to be brought into a spacious place is just, is just a dream. Because suffering confines and narrows our world. But God comes and opens it up. And he gives us this choice food. Uh, it's, it's really the, full of fatness, it says. Now we don't like fat, but... Again, you know, when I came out of hospital, it was quite funny because they gave me a diet sheet and they said, forget all this diet stuff because I lost so much weight. They said, you've got to take butter, you've got to take uh, full fat, you've got to have bacon and sausages and everything. I just thought it was almost worth going into hospital to have that. Of course, um, times have changed. But that was the idea. God's bringing you to a table laden with good things. And so the question then comes, well, there's a play on words. You come to a table laden with food, but now how do you get there? Well, Job, you're laden with judgment due to the wicked. Judgment and justice have taken hold of you. And it's re Elihu is really saying, don't make false judgments about God. Now, you'll see this coming over and over again. He's in danger of thinking of God in the way that wicked people do. Thinking of God as unjust and cruel and, and not kind, not good. And he's saying, don't rely on wealth or bribes. Now, the, the translation here is quite difficult. Uh, the, the way the NIV puts it, I, I think it's pretty good, though. Would your wealth or even all your mighty efforts sustain you so you would not be in distress? You can't rely on your, your wealth. And he then says, you basically, you can't long for death. Well, you can, but it's wrong to long for death. And he's saying, don't turn to evil and don't speak evil of God. Because he's saying, you need to trust that God will bring you into a spacious place and you know some of you you're watching this and you're feeling incredibly confined and I know what that's like and it's incredibly oppressive that's the point of it it's like being pressed down on well please don't think evil of God God will bring you into a spacious place and he will bring you into a, a good place a place laden with good things 
it's it's just such a great temptation. I I think this is one of the key messages of the book of Job. Actually, it's such a great temptation for us to listen to the accusations of the evil one and think ill of God. And Elihu is right. We've not to go there. That's not a place we should go. Uh, the honor of our God depends upon, in some sense, at least, his people acknowledging that he is good and the giver of good. And he will bring us out. He will free us. My chains fell off. My heart was free. I rose, went forth and followed thee. All right. I shall see you tomorrow morning. God bless you. Bye.